Uh, we're going to make a bourbon, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, bourbon mint ice cream. And you need the mint. Uh, yeah. Which is, uh, I make bourbon ice cream in my store, and uh, I started it about um, three months ago. Mm, good. And now it's I think you should take it home because seller there. it won't it's, get it uh, finished by Paul and me. If you're not me. an alcohol person, don't have it. It's Seriously. intensely alcoholic. This we call it an adult flavor. Very. Uh, and we and do check ID I'll every come day. Back. For I'll, I'll get it. I'll come back. But anyway, so uh, he out. thought of adding a sprig of mint and making it like, you know, for Kentucky Derby, a mint julep or I something. I have more if you need it. I need, uh, I need five. I need half a... Boy, that's just about there. I think so. Okay. Uh, oh, don't let anybody ha- give her anything. But I'm, I'm going to have to measure it because it's kind of precise. No, she's not a poor thing. She's the most spoiled dog on earth. Come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. So we're going to start off with five quarts of ice cream mix. And that'll be just about right. Look at that. Is that it? Or I have more for you if you want. Close. You want a little more? Uh... Yeah. Okay, coming up. Oh, could you take that in? Yeah, 10%. More? Yes. Uh, and then what I did was I cut, oh, the mint. I cut vanilla beans. I scraped uh, beans, um, uh, five beans, one per quart. These? Yeah. Yeah, they're about $100 a pound. Yeah. But, you know, that's what it is. Do you charge more for those no. alcohol no. flavors? No. Wow. Okay. wow. It all evens out. It all comes out. It depends what you want to do. Go ahead. Okay, so that's about five quarts of... Uh, <laughs> of this stuff. So, Jeff, if you're using all top all line products, you're still going to get a return on investment no matter what, right? I think that's the concern that, that you're going to want. I just want to make money, and that's what I do, so I, I don't think we Don't worry about making money. Worry about making the best ice cream you can. That's what, the money that's will given. follow you. That's a given. No, it's not a given. You do your best job. What's a given is the money. Yeah, that's the given. <laughs> If you make the best product you can, the money will follow you there. It'll follow you right to the end. But if you don't make the best product, and if you skimp on, on ingredients or whatever, in, in Oreo cookie ice cream, if you use Walmart Oreo. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the ingredients in this are uh, the mix. Now, by the way, when I'm making a, a product, I count the number of ingredients. And then I look at my card and make sure I have that same number. It's just a quick thing, because otherwise you'll forget the sugar, I'll forget the bourbon, I'll forget the vanilla bean scrapings. So on my card I have one, two, three, four, five ingredients. And here I have one, two, three, four, five. This is, I use local honey, and if you, if you know honey, uh, wildly different prices. Honey's ridiculously expensive anyway. Uh, this is called sourwood honey. It's, it's a very strong honey flavor, and it goes good with the bourbon. So that's what I do. First thing in your machine is usually the mix, right? You would say that. Which machine am I using? This one? You're right using here? the big one. Okay, the big one. Is it uh, ready to roll? Yes. All I did was rinse it twice. Okay. So we'll put in five quarts of mix. And then put in these little scrapings. That's from five beans. Um, it's it just slid them down the middle, cut off the ends, the squiggly end, the other end. 
The reason you do that is because when you score them and then you take the other end of the knife and do this, it'll go right through the end, so you won't, you know, it'll be cut at both ends. Hello? <laughs> Okay, and, the, and this also gives you those little dots in there, you know, the, like Briars used to have. Uh, bourbon, a little vanilla, five ounces of vanilla. And because this machine wasn't really cleaned out thoroughly, we'll just take this and get that out of there. I know, I know. I gave the maid the day off. <laughs> it looks it. <laughs> All right. And now, now the good stuff. We're going to add the bourbon and the honey. There you go. And this will be homemade ice cream. Which will run at 234. Yeah, that's 22 ounces. The recipe calls for 20, but I'll never get it all out of there. It's so thick. When I'm at the store, I take the jar, I put it in the sink with hot water, and let, it, let the hot water really thin it out. Then it pours easily. It's, honey is just so... I hate, I hate to work with it, but it, there's nothing like it. Honey's great. I buy honey by the gallon. It's about $100 for a, one of these of honey. Uh, but it's, it's really, uh, there's nothing like honey. Uh, you do different prices in the store. What? You do different prices different No, no. It all comes out even at the end. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you do. Oh, you do. Oh, sure. Check. Check with your individual state. Was it worth getting the liquor license just to serve one? You have to decide that. I sell. I sell 25 flavors of adult ice cream. Oh wow. And about 15 flavors of regular. Wow. Did you always need a liquor license? What? Did you always need a liquor license? Well, if you need it now, you always needed it. Well, I thought I'd seen you on the video when you first started doing it, and I, I just remember hearing about But in Florida, there's 45 different levels of liquor licenses. 45. So whether you own a bar, a package goods, whether you're a yacht, whether you're a country club, whether you're a hotel, whether you're a cart, whether you're a private club, all these are different liquor licenses. Forty-five of them. How much bourbon? What? How much bourbon? A quart. That was a quart? That was a quart. Now when I make it, um, I make a full batch and it's one of these, which is a 175. I used to use expensive bourbon, but I couldn't taste the difference because of the cream. So now I just use generic bourbon. It's not a difference in, it's not the money that did it, it's that I can't taste the difference. What? This? I don't know, twenty-two dollars, something like that. It's from the Bourbon Province of China. <laughs> uh, this is going to be pretty different. You can't taste it, but it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty good. Now, something like this is going to run much softer in your cabinet than is, uh, say, vanilla ice cream. So again, you'll put it in the corner where it gets two corners of refrigeration. And also the door is going to get icy. The whole front of the machine will get a coat of ice on it. But you couldn't do this, that much no. liquor or anything like it in any other machine. No, they don't can't. get cold enough. And again, the liquor is not freezing. The liquor is being held in suspension. Question? I do, uh, actually, a funny story. When I was sitting back there three and a half years ago, 
the the gentleman over here made. Um, you can say it, Steve. <laughs> Steve made uh, Merlot, Merlot ices, and I sat there, and then I came up just like you all didn't taste it, and I thought it was vile, and that's what caused me to go into the business because I said, I mean, you know, he's like a guru, and and he made this awful tasting stuff and I said well I could do better than that so I immediately after I bought the machine the first thing I made was Merlot chip ice cream and uh, it was phenomenal uh, and I use wine I use I have uh, ice cream with Merlot with uh, Pinot Grigio uh, Pinot Grigio uh, my champagne ice cream is outstanding uh, other wines oh sangria yeah, yeah. I, I don't tend to use cheap wines, but I don't use obviously thirty dollar bottles of wine. Uh, it changes. I shop around. In liquor, where the only one that I found that really makes a difference is Grand Marnier liqueur ice cream. When I make at Christmas, uh, the orange liqueur Grand Marnier, forty five dollars a bottle. And I take six California lemons, lemons because they are oranges because they have a thicker skin. Grate them off. A chef calls that the zest. I have this. The finished product is pure white with the aroma and the taste of the Grand Marnier orange liqueur and the little specks, specks of orange in there just for uh, looks. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Great Christmas present. You could never afford to sell it. You know, well, I'll it's, give it's you a little secret high. about that. Um, Grand Marnier is. Triple sec. Yeah, and triple sec in my mind doesn't work. And triple sec is what I make my Grand Marnier ice cream out of, and it's my second largest seller. I make Grand Marnier chocolate chip ice cream, and it's my second largest selling ice cream. Where you can cheat on the liquor is uh, Kahlua, if you're making coffee and cream. Uh, use, a, use an inexpensive uh, coffee liqueur, because the coffee itself is going to be the overpowering flavor. But again, it's like chocolate, it's all personal taste. Can you beer ice cream? Yeah. No. no don't believe that. No, no beer, no bacon. No beer, no bacon. No beer, no bacon. Those, are, those are fads. I mean, nobody really yeah. wants them twice. Now, They'll one of the first classes I ran, the fella opened up in Tampa, and he was adamant about opening up with beer, port, lager, and uh, florals. You know, uh, jasmine. And, and, and I said, you know, maybe you ought to have a few flavors that people actually like and then grow into these and he wouldn't hear of it I mean he was insistent upon beer and and stout and and those flavors and you know the end is obvious uh, you, you got to there's the art and the science here and the art is what you want to do you know you want to have fun making ice cream that's why I have 35 to 40 flavors I love coming up with flavors but you can't keep doing it and you can, now, just an example. I love Sambuca. And one of the flavors I came up with, I called Slambuca. And I mean, it was wild, but nobody liked it. I liked it, but nobody liked it. So I don't sell it. So you have to serve two masters. You have to serve the people paying you, and you have to be true to yourself in, in having fun and coming up with flavors. And the bottom line is at the cash register. If people aren't buying that flavor, no matter how much you love it. Remember when I made avocado ice cream? Yeah, how about Paula when you made Sharknado? the avocado ice cream. I thought it was horrible. Jeff, Jeff, I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> but because avocados just weren't meant to be put in ice cream. It's like making salsa ice cream. <laughs> you, you had a question? Part of the country you live in. That's very true. I make avocado it, it, it really depends, like you said, on the part of the country. Uh, and I'll give you have an example. to think about Jeff, 100 customers, how many are going to buy that? Yeah. Jeff put specs into his ice cream. Never in 100 million years will you ever find specs in ice cream made in New York City. Because we know it's ground up cockroaches. There's no question about it's ground up cockroaches. So they won't do it. Then you get down to Philadelphia, and if the vanilla ice cream isn't yellow, they won't buy it. It's got to have the egg shade in it, or a real egg yolk, otherwise they won't buy it. Different parts of the country have different oddities. Um, out in um, uh, the Pacific Northwest, one of their favorite flavors is sweet cream ice cream. 
Does anybody know what sweet cream ice cream is? <laughs> That's ice cream that it was 11 o'clock at night and you're tired as a dog and you're making the vanilla ice cream and you forget to put the vanilla extract in. And rather than you know, throw it away, you put on, get your chalkboard and put out special today sweet cream ice cream. It's just the dairy mix frozen with no flavor in it right away at all. And in some parts of the country, it's the biggest selling product. So who knew? <laughs> Yes. Uh, what was the question? Do you make any tequila ice cream? Oh, sure. I make uh, uh, margarita. I make margarita ice cream, also a very top seller in the store. And I make that with tequila. And I make pina colada with rum. Uh, yeah. I, I make uh, amaretto fudge, Kahlua fudge. Uh, Mystic Slide, which What's is Amaretto, Kahlua, and Vodka. Uh, hmm? Yeah, I do Bailey's. That's one of Paula's favorites. Yes, yeah. His Bailey's is, Paula just says, fantastic. Yes. I'm sorry, can you speak up a little bit? <laughs> I don't like the, the taste of Gatorade to begin with. I think it's awful, so I, I personally don't like it as a thing. But I'll tell you what you're running into there is uh, name problems with trademarks. Um, we have been making cookies and cream ice cream since the beginning of the time. We cannot call it Oreo cookie ice cream because the people at Nabisco, they started in New Jersey and they said, we're going to sue you if you call it Nabisco. I called them up and I said, are you people the, the idiot marketing capital of the world? Don't you realize every time one of my customers makes Oreo cookie ice cream, we're promoting Oreo cookies? Yeah, what do you want us to call it? Cookies and cream and we never mention your name? And they said, yeah. And they have held to that for 20 years. So be careful that Gatorade doesn't come after you and say, uh, you're using our good name. Uh, I just went after a bunch of used machines at eBay because they're listing them as Electrofreeze Emery Thompson. They're, they're capitalizing on my name when it's an Electrofreeze machine. I said cease and desist because it was built by, for Electrofreeze. Now, so people are very touchy. Uh, I, I subscribe very strongly to Donald Trump who says you've got to protect your brand because people are go always going to come after it. You know, if someone comes in and says uh, Mystic Slices and Creams and he's selling pie and ice cream, uh, I hope that Jeff would be on the phone as a lawyer in, in a heartbeat because they're, they're taking an offshoot of his good name, which you work hard for your name. Uh, we're trademarked in every country in the world, which costs a fortune, uh, but I've got a guy down in uh, uh, Mexico who calls his machines Emery Batch Freezers. I mean, it's, it's, it's little better than a salt and ice machine, but he's capitalizing <laughs> off my name. And uh, you've got to protect yourself. Look at Disney. They will, boy, they'll come down on you like a hammer if you try to use Mickey Mouse without their permission. Now, your question uh, has an interesting answer because my primary care doctor is wanting to sell my ice cream in his office, in a freezer in his office, and he wants me to add uh, protein powder to it, either whey, rice, or, um, or pea, pea protein, uh, <laughs> not pea protein. And he, he wants me to add that, and he wants to sell it uh, in his office. So that's what I'm working on now, making a rice protein powder ice cream. But with flavors, obviously, it's not going to taste like rice protein, but... Yes? Quick question, uh, back to, uh, you're talking about trademarks and different things. We see a lot of the guys that have their Italian ice uh, parts, and they'll put Mickey Mouse on it or Spider-Man just to attract the kids. Is that oh, you bet. Yeah. And it's only well, a matter just of time. remember, any well, press is good press. Yeah. Well, the best thing that can happen is Disney sues you. Yeah, that's true. But, um, you know, Marvel be Comics on TV, is probably not coming after great. the guy, but they'll come after him. If, if a Disney employee sees that, uh, they're going to get a bonus that week for reporting it to the attorneys. Disney is fearsome about their... Even just for a little tiny ice cream. But you know what? There's a do it. There, do it. You'll be on every news station in the world. I would say no. The big guy going to you know, fight the little guy? You'll, 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 you'll. I would say absolutely not. Oh, and, do and it. Here, here's do why. It. 
If I come into your store and you have Smunkers uh, cookie cones, uh, Arnold's Smunker cookie cones, whatever they're called, and have a Pepsi. Oh, the Spunk uh, Fire. Thank you. If you've got that, if you've got Pepsi, <coughs> and you've got all these different name brands, it's not your store. It's an advertising forum for all these big corporations. The only name that should be in your store is your name. However, you want them to only think you. You want to have Mickey Mouse ice cream? Go for it. I wouldn't. Go for it. You, Mickey Mouse ice cream. Can in you or, imagine in, <laughs> the 6 o'clock news coming down? Walt Disney World is fighting a guy with an ice cream cart? It'll never get to the news. They'll have, it, have you oh, shut I'd down. Oh, I'd make sure it gets to the news. <laughs> yeah. I, I, be careful of trademarks. Any company. And, you know, would you want this done to your own business? If, if you develop your own name, do you want somebody else stealing it from you? Well, you probably got there because it's your name. You would care. Um, we're ready. Okay. And we have sprigs of mint here. Why? I don't know, but we have sprigs of mint. You can't taste this, huh? No. <laughs> They're almost, almost there. Guys. Almost there. Um, this will be our last flavor, and then uh, if you'd like, I'll give you a tour of the factory. And I got to tell you, Jeff and I were talking about all of you uh, during lunch. True. true. We ha this is absolutely the truth. We were talking about you. We haven't had a class this lively in six months. You are the best class that we can remember. Never had better questions. Uh, I never had better arguments with Jeff. It's so easy to argue with him. And it's true. <laughs> you really are. I mean, every one of you is going to be a great entrepreneur, and we're not—we don't say this. Well, you go back everyone. and look at the not, tapes. Not that one couple. There not were. that one couple. No, not them. <laughs> you go back and look at our tapes, and you'll never see me compliment an audience, uh, though we like them. But you guys—I mean, you're all excited. You're, the last you're, you're all one doing was great. Hell. Yes. Was it? Yes. Hell, the last question. Why is the grout between your floors black? How come it's not cream to match the floor? That's the kind of questions we got. <laughs> yes. Are you going to blow this on it now? <laughs> when are you going to put the mint in? That's what I was wondering. Put some what? Are you going to put mint in it? Mint in it? Yeah. No. That's what I thought, too. By the way, you see how it's freezing here? Yes. Wheatgrass? Uh, I haven't. No, my wife eats wheatgrass, but uh, it, I don't know. Uh, I guess you could, but it doesn't seem to me to be something to go into ice cream. I'm not trying to. Remember who's paying you? Yeah, the the, the very customers. important. Now I do make some concessions. I'm a diabetic. I'm type one. I'm insulin dependent. So let me just show you something. When I make Italian ice that I'm going to eat, I use agave, uh, which is what they make tequila out of. So it's, it's got to be good. But uh, there's this thing called the glycemic scale. Uh, 100 is the worst, 0 is the best. Uh, sugar is at about 92. And this stuff is down around 27. But it's not sweet. Enough. I have, like, oh yeah, if you use it right. But I have no business being in your ice cream parlor. There's no way I should be there. So when someone comes in and says sugar free, you really have to think long and hard and then throw them out. And just say, you really, you know, if you're diabetic type 1, you have no business being in here. They know it. But they're just, you know, testing their own limits. Uh, this, this helps me, but I still should not be eating any ice cream at all. Yes? Stevia doesn't have enough of what we, or neither does NutraSweet. Uh, it, uh, yes, but it doesn't have enough solids in it to allow us to substitute it out uh, for sugar. It's sweet, but it doesn't have the solids. You know, like I said, heavy cream and skim milk, uh, it's not there. This, this works. Um, molasses works. Honey is great. Uh, so is maple syrup. Oh, I love maple syrup. <laughs> Gee, it just got quiet. What do you need? Another container. Oh, I can do that. Just use one of these. Okay. There you go. Feel the weight of this. 
Oh, that's it's heavy. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, very heavy. All right, so remember, the Florida Highway Patrol is sitting out in the parking lot across the street, so don't go, don't anybody have seconds on this. We don't want you to get in trouble. Okay, you can have some if you want. Come here, girl. 